Open your eyes. Open your eyes, guys. Open your eyes. <gasps> Ta-da! Can you guys see? Yes, you can! Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, what's up, guys? Today is Thursday. I forgot the exact date. I think it is the 18th. It's the 18th, isn't it? Well, because you know how I know? Because yesterday was the 17th. And if yesterday was the 17th, that means tomorrow is the 19th. Which only means today is the 18th. Am I correct or am I not correct? I think I'm correct. Yes. <laughs> and today just happens to be a Thursday. So, that would only mean, in my case, probably not in a lot of people case, a lot of people's cases, is that means that I do not have school tomorrow. Hip hip hooray, balloons, confetti, and all the whole shabam bam bees. Not bam bees. Um, which is a really nice movie. I I really like that Disney movie. Speaking of Disney movie, do you think they're gonna make Bambi into a 3D movie? Because you know they're gonna make Lion King into a 3D movie, which is actually gonna be in September, which is next month. I believe it's September 16th. But if I'm not correct, then I'm not correct, and you guys can research that for yourself. But. Um, today, um, I mean, so, I just pretty much went through my classes. I only had two classes, and my teacher was just talking about, uh, the something imagination. Imagination reminds me of Barney. I'll get back to you on that. Something imagination. So the class just happens to be sociology. And the imagination thing that I was talking about was sociological imagination. Ah! <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, we were talking about that. And he would get into it. My, I'm, I'm talking about my sociological teacher. Or my so sociology teacher, I should say. And he was getting into it. He was really deep into it. And we were, we were talking about that. The sociological imagination written by C.W. or C. Wright Mills. And he wrote it in the 1950s. Specifically, I think it was written in 1959. And during the 1950s, they gave a little background, right? And literally, this is what we learned today. He was talking about that it was um, written during the time of the Cold War. Um, that was during the Soviet Union, which is now presently called Russia. And <clears throat> they were, you know, we were going against them. Um, but it was a Cold War because we weren't actually, like, fighting, fighting them. You know, and uh, it was just... Uh, but it was still a really fearful situation, and we had World War II around that time as well. Now, that being said, there's a lot of things happening in society that my teacher pointed out. And so C. Wright Mills, or C. W. Mills, or C. W. M., whatever you want to say, or just Mills, or C., or, I mean, it's not like C, like CeeLo Green, but never mind. That, <laughs> that really doesn't matter. <clears throat> because he kind of predicts what the future will kind of be like. And it kind of makes sense that there is this power elite, this uh, this higher power, that literally con will control the, literally, the liberty of the people. And usually, those people, um... <clears throat> think that they have control of their lives. Now let's talk about America in in per, you know in our perspective in, in our perspective we you know we you know sad to say it, but our world our lives you know there there's people out there and you know I'm not saying all people but most people think to themselves as you know it, this world revolves around them that it's like I you know like that's why we have stuff like iPod you know, and I, iPads, and, you know, and I, Internet. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, it's usually about I. You know, people even Google themselves. So, you know, uh, we don't really think, we think that we have the freedoms when other people, when the government say, or the people that, I shouldn't just say government, but those that are of higher power, um, say that we do, and those that have the higher power, or which mills say that we're in the power elite, um, that can, you know, just have the people that have the qualities or know of business, government, as well as the military, so they're all in that, um, and who sounds like a person like that, 
seems like our president. Our president is focused on our military, is focused on our, you know, he's our, you know, he's our chief representative of our, you know, of our military. Um, of our government, he is the main guy that we look at. If we think of government, who do we think of first? Our president. And then business, you know, this whole world is, I mean, this interacting, interaction with other countries, um, being able to know which one to sell, which one to export, is a type of business. And you know what? That qualifies him as a power elite, person of power elite. Now, he has the power to either give us freedom as well as take away our freedom. How? Because of laws and rules that are, you know, in the... In, in in the country, for instance, if he puts a word like, okay, no smoking in this area, <clears throat> or you get punished. Now we don't have the liberty to smoke there. Um, because you know we're, we're, we just don't have the the liberty to you know it, it you know we get in trouble. We don't have that freedom. Um, on the, you know, of being able to do that. However, sometimes that, those freedoms, you know, we should be, I don't know, it's a real debate, um, among people. So, I don't know, because we may, some people may say, well, you know, we got these rules, and they're embedded, because it protects other people, but they're still free, um, to a limitation. However, see, they can smoke, they can smoke if they choose to in that spot. Um, even though you're not supposed to, they can smoke there. However, if you smoke there, they know the consequences that they're going to have to suffer. Now, because we, you know, but the good guys will follow the instructions and they're not free to do it. The bad guys, of course, they're bad, so they do it. Now, think of it this way. We have a Second Amendment. And our Second Amendment is right to bear arms. If we... Um, are able to carry a gun, let's say that. What do you think about that, right? That's a really debatable issue. Some people say, no, eliminate guns. Some people say, let's have guns. If we're going to have liberty, we should have it. Um, and you know what? I believe, I believe, I personally believe, and if you think about it, think about it. If you have guns, if everybody has guns, good guys, the bad guys, then... Everybody, technically, has an equal opportunity. If we all have the exact... Let's say we all have the exact same gun. Of course, that's not going to happen because there are different types of guns. We got shotguns, we got pistols, we got a whole bunch of different guns, a whole bunch of different types of ammunition. But let's say we all got the same exact gun. Let's say like a little revolver. Okay, so, we all have one, right? And... So... Now the good guys and the good guys can protect themselves, defend themselves with the gun that they have, and the bad guys wouldn't. You know, will try to second think, you know, think about it secondly, and think, huh, I shouldn't <laughs> fire against him because he might have friends that will probably put. If I put one bullet in him and I kill him, he'll probably have a whole bunch of friends that can put a whole bunch of bullets in me. So think about it that way because if you have a uh, place that doesn't have guns. Okay, let's think about it this way. Uh, a state or a nation that doesn't have guns, or they eliminate guns, but of course guns exist. We can't, you know, we can't say that. So that means the bad guys will, of course, try to find their way to get a gun so they can gain the upper hand, and the good guys will follow the rules. Not get a gun, follow the rules, because that's what the government tells, tells me to do, that's what the people up there tell me to do, I'm not going to have a gun. Now, the bad guy can shoot the the good guy. The other good guys don't have guns, so they can get shot as well, depending on how much ammunition the bad guy has, or how many you know friends he has, because he has the upper hand. He has more power because he has the gun. Think about it that way. Now, you can debate with me all you want, but you got to think about it this way. You know, is it good to put the power of freedom in other people's hands or should we be able to decide? Because we know what's good for us, right? We should know what's good for us. And we should know... I mean, we should be able to 
freely do what's correct. You know, our parents, our teachers, um, our mentors, our educators, our gurus, everyone told us how to, what's right and what's wrong. How to be polite, how to be kind, you know, all that good stuff. And they taught us what are the bad things based off the punishment that they give us. Now, as we grow older and our minds can uh, calculate complex things, not just, you know, knowing how to add numbers, knowing how to multiply numbers, knowing how to, and going higher and higher using, um, you know, higher types of math, using um, more sophisticated language. Now we have these issues that we can surely think about and try to apply it and see what happens. Through a scientific process, um, you know, using trial and error. Experiment, you know, observe, exp uh, make a hypothesis, will this happen, test it out, and boom. If whatever the answer is, it's, it, it will either, you know, go for what your answer is or not. So what I'm trying to say is step out of your comfort zone and observe the world a little bit. I'm taking sociology for right, uh, right now. And it's pretty interesting, and that's the reason why I'm bringing it up, is because I took the class, and my teacher was very into it, and now I'm kind of into it a lot. You know, so it's just a, a class that I believe that um, will surely help a lot of people, not just me. So I know this video is going really long, so that's pretty much it for me. Um, I don't want to continue, like, talking and talking and talking, because, you know, I can spend, like, a whole day, if not a whole you know, week explaining to you what, you know, I feel about this subject. And it's really crazy because it was just today that he started talking about it. And it's, that's just chapter one of the sociological um, imagination. And other books call it something different, you know, uh, sociological co um, consciousness and stuff like that. So, um, as I talk about things that I learned from school, I want you guys to learn from it. Because not a lot of people out there have the opportunity, the money, to go to school. Um, I know why. Because of the, you know, budget cuts and all that stuff. You know, classes are getting removed. There's way too many students trying to get into one little tiny class that we need to be able to transfer to another school or to be able to graduate to, you know, your, you know, the college or to even go leave out of, you know, stuff like that. Or to even just get into a high school, or a middle school, or an elementary school, or a preschool, or a daycare, or whatever. Sometimes it's difficult to even enroll into a, a class, or a school, or a daycare, because we don't have the finances. And um, it's hard. It's hard. So I want to be able to give you guys a little bit of what I learned for my classes as much as I can, whatever I can remember. Plus it will help me, it will be beneficial for me because I'm kind of teaching you what I'm learning. And so when I have a test or whatever, I can always look back at these videos and learn, <laughs> you know, relearn and review of what I did. So anyways, like I said, this video is going pretty long, so I don't want to, you know, get you guys away from your homework and all your studies as well because I know it's almost the fall time and that means it's school. Um, you know, usually that is when, you know, uh, students go to school. Well, usually here in America. Now, in other countries, it's probably most likely in different times of the you know season or the year. Um, so you may start in the summer when it's summer here. You know, you may be starting school there. So depends. So, anyways, that's pretty much it for me today. And I want to say, keep learning, keep having fun. And you know, it's pretty much Thursday, but tomorrow is Friday, and it's gonna be TGIF, right? But actually, this is my Friday because. This is my last day of school, like I said before. So, that's pretty much it, and peace off.